Take it easy. Hmm? Ah, Traveler and Paimon. You came. Yep, and it looks like we made it just in time! Although, can't say the same for the Cuckoosaurs. Bit of a low turnout, huh? Yeah, you'll see why soon enough. All right, get ready. Three, two, one, fly! feel light as a feather. <laughs> I'm flying without a Kukasaur. These phlogiston wings are awesome. What the? What's going on? Paimon can barely believe her eyes. How did they fly all on their own? The merchants we ran into that day were selling a product called phlogiston wings. It's a flying machine worn on the back. To operate it, you just use a handheld trackball that controls the flow of gaseous phlogiston. That's incredible! Yeah. If our tribe, well, if Natlan mass adopted this technology, it would revolutionize our mobility and responsiveness in times of crisis. Just think of the countless tragedies that could be averted. I, I feel like I'm dreaming. Did I really just fly on my own without the help of- You'd better believe it! Plus, you just passed a flying trial! Uh, right, Elder Alpa? Hmm. Uh, Elder Alpa? Um, should this really count as a pass if we did the trial using phlogiston wings? Why not? The scoring rubric is about flying performance. It doesn't. Um, you yeah, may be, but. I mean, even Chaska had to ride a Kukasaur in a trial, right? And the whole point of the trial is to test both your flying technique and your ability to work with a Saurian companion. Well, if we can fly by ourselves, maybe we don't need to test the ladder anymore. Tasca, Traveler, what are your thoughts on this new invention? You see? Even the Traveler agrees. Hmm. I agree that they have strategic value, but I don't think it makes any sense to evaluate candidates by the current testing standard. Uh, oh, why? Shunan finally mustered the courage to go through with this, and now you're saying it doesn't count? I don't have any experience using these wings in battle, nor is it immediately obvious how to incorporate them into the existing systems in our tribe. Taking a longer-term perspective, I think we need to start by getting thoroughly acquainted with how these things work. Then we can develop a new trial format with new assessment criteria, tailored to candidates using the phlogiston wings. Hmm. You all raise valid points. But Tasca, while your proposal sounds perfectly reasonable, it would probably take years to put it into practice. We lost so many people in that war. These phlogiston wings could be exactly what we need to strengthen our forces and boost morale in this trying time. And as for real-world battle experience, there will be plenty of opportunities to gain that. I have high hopes for you, Junon. Huh? Hey, stop staring into space! Say thank you! Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Elder Alpa! You have nothing to thank me for. Remember, the way you got your wings back was by relying on yourself. Oh, Elder Alpa! Bad news! Kukasaurs are attacking the merchants again! Again? Okay, everyone, stay put while I... Hmm? Huh? Chaska? Chaska rush off like that! And then Elder Alpha and the others too? Anyway, let's go see what this is all about!
Oh, it's back! It found us again! Run! Get out of here! <coughs> Curses. She's really riled up this time. Hey! Stop running! We'll never outrun a creature with wings! Get back here and let's fight! Stop! All of you! Jaska! Oh, wonderful! Quick, get rid of that thing! Uh, what's going on? Why isn't she doing anything? So it really is you. Sister. Wait, sister? That Kukusura is Chaska's sister? Wait! Is Chaska gonna be okay? Should we go check on her? Chaska! <sighs> I'm fine. Sorry for making you worry. <laughs> no point. She's an expert at hiding her tracks. Once she's shaken you off, you'll never catch up to her. At least, I always used to lose to her at hide-and-seek when we were kids. Well, yeah. You know I was raised by Kukasaurus. Anyway, she and I grew up in the nest together. We played together all the time, chasing each other through treetops or mountaintops. Not all Kukasaurus are friendly towards people. Koya, for instance, she's fine with me because we grew up around each other, but... She's not f When Mom decided to send me away, Koya strongly protested, and after I left, she became more- Maybe she thinks that humans stole you away from her. It's a possibility, but in any case, we still stayed best friends at first. I had a hard time adjusting to life in the tribe, so whenever something went wrong, I'd run off into the wild and vent to Koya. Ah, so that's what Uncle Cusco was talking about. He said you seemed to prefer hanging out with Saurians to your own kind back then. Yeah, I did. But then, gradually, everything changed. With a new mom and dad, a new tribe, and Koichi. I started getting curious about these humans. And made an effort to understand their behavior. The more time I spent with them, the less I spent with Koya. And then, one day... It was Koya's turn to leave the nest. She sought me out and asked if I was willing to leave the tribe and go live in the wilderness with her. As far as I can remember, that was the first time she ever approached a human settlement on purpose. So, how did you answer her? Well, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you if I'd said yes. No, I... I was torn. On the one hand, I'd already made up my mind to embrace my new family and accept my human identity. But I also knew that Koya wasn't a fan of humans, and I didn't want to disappoint her. She saw it as a personal betrayal, threw a huge fit, and then flew off. We hadn't seen each other since, well, until today. Not for a lack of trying, though. I tried asking Mom where Koya's new nest was so I could talk things out with her. But Koya had already asked Mom not to tell me where she'd moved to. It must be hard for Mom, being stuck between her two daughters. Mm. If things carry on like this, I need to make sure I find her before anyone else. For now, let's bring the wounded back to the tribe, and see what Mutota and Elder Alba have in mind.
So, uh, I hear there's been another Kukasaur attack. Ha! I knew it! They're wild animals, and they can't be trusted. Hey, show a little respect. The Kukasaurs are our partners. <laughs> Maybe in the Flying Squad, but they don't give a hoot about the rest of us. Well, now that we have the Phlogiston Wings, do we even need the Kukasaurs anymore? Are you kidding? How are we supposed to protect our tribe without them? I, uh, I didn't mean it like that. Huh? Protect our tribe? Or are you just scared that your precious flying squad will lose its prestigious position? You take that back! <sighs> Things are changing so quickly. Tesco, there's a conflict emerging there. Aren't you going to nip it in the bud? <sighs> the whole tribe's talking about this now. Breaking up a single fight won't solve anything. The real source of conflict here is the phlogiston wings. And what happened with Koya. On any other day, people would just brush this attack aside. After all, clashes between wild kookasaurs and humans are no more common than those between people. But now that the phlogiston wings have entered the equation, it sparked a debate over whether our tribe needs the kookasaurs at all. I worry that we risk repeating the mistakes of the Cinder City. Back then, Lord Ochkan's hatred of the Saurians nearly destroyed the peace forged by the Pyro Archon. Chaska, to prevent things from deteriorating further, I'd like to task you with restoring peace to the tribe. I will. Traveler, you've already done so much for Natlan, and the flower fit. Thank you. And don't forget about Paimon! Just leave this to us! This whole situation has unfolded so quickly that it's put us on a back foot. You think someone might have orchestrated all this? It's possible. Leave it with also Chaska. Could you try to keep a low profile while you're out there digging around? I'll do my best. Okay, so where should we start? This all began with Koya's attacks. If we can find out what led her to do it, that should give us something to work with. Unlikely. Given how she reacted when I showed up, I don't think she's forgiven me. If you want to resolve a conflict through dialogue, sometimes you need a third-party facilitator. Let's go see my mom. Scratch. Watch out! Show me your courage! <laughs> Flying?
Wow, so this is where you used to live as a child? Mm-hmm. When I was little, we used to do this thing where I'd jump from the top of this tree, and Koya would fly over from the platform and catch me in midair. Or sometimes we'd both fly from the treetop together, and then after some aerial maneuvering, she'd throw me up onto that platform. After we got a bit older, we went to the nearby shores looking for even greater heights. Really? I just thought it made a fun story. Then I'll share more with you when there's time. <coughs> hey, Mama Bird. I'm back. My last visit was only a week ago. I brought a couple of friends with me. These are the Traveler and Paimon. Traveler, Paimon, this is my mom. Her name is Chimpu. In the human tongue, anyway. Uh... Hi! No, not really. I don't speak it as such, but I can sort of get the gist. Although only with Mom and Koya, since I spent my formative... Even then, it's basically a best guess based on their sounds, body language, and expressions. As for whether Mom understands me, I can't always tell. But somehow... Don't worry. I'm doing well, but... I know she's never been a fan of humans, but she's never deliberately attacked them before either. Does, um, Auntie Chimpu know anything? Doesn't look like it. Then could you please tell me where she's living nowadays? I really need to talk to her. If this animosity between her and the tribe continues, then the next time there's an incident, I don't know if I'll make it there in time. She said she'll take us there. Thank you, Mom. a really remote location because she was trying to get as far away from humans as possible we stay here hmm okay got it traveler paimon 
Mom says we should stay out of sight for now. She'll talk to Koya first. Koya is very hostile toward humans right now. So if we show up unannounced, it might just make things worse. like things are more complicated than I imagined. There's evidence in this area suggesting that Koya might have been the victim of a human attack. What? No! It's Chime, Koya's child. The attacker, they came over the sea. What the heck? Who would do such a thing? I searched day and night and finally found them. Oh yeah! The false contraption is working like a charm. Hey, there's another one. Wait, is that the one that got away last time? Who cares? Just get them all! Depot pays us per catch! Closer, or I'll uh, go, phlogiston wings. Take me out of here. Uh! uh oh, looks like it malfunctioned. This is bad. Mom and Koya are already injured, and if that thing explodes right next to them, help! D Elemental energy suppresses it. Please, someone, get back. <laughs> Solution. All right then. That was too close. I thought I was going to die. Answer us honestly. Were you the ones who attacked Koya before? I am... No! It was... It was... Well, she says it was you. Just tell me, who sent you here? I... It was to Paul. He told us to catch all the wild kookasaurs we could... And uh, he also said that this kookasaur has become a thorn in his side. So he... To Paul? Huh. Uh, he pretty much never communicates with us in person, and whenever we trade kookasaurs for fl So you didn't even- All we did was slap some labels on them and transport- To make it harder to trace their origins. Uh, I don't know- Well, that's mighty convenient, huh? Uh, no, no need. T'Pol doesn't tell us much, but he always stresses that he wants them alive. So that gives us some clues. This is just a best guess, of course. But we suspect that the gaseous phlogiston stored in the trackballs is drawn directly from the kookasaurs. What? Easy now. You're still injured. Hey. Yes, ma'am. So... The gaseous phlogiston has to be highly refined in order to power the phlogiston, but the kookasaurs have a natural ability to process gaseous phlogiston. That's enough. 
uh, T'Pol should have them. We've tried looking for it ourselves, even fa- Um, random thought. T'Pol. Jessica, Traveler. Elder Alba? What brings you all the way out here? Well, I was patrolling. I don't believe it. Elder Alba, does the name to- Huh? So he's a member? No. If he was a member- <sighs> Now that you mention it, you were away on a mission. He was a craftsman from the Children of Echoes. The Children of Echoes? That's rare. But despite his best efforts, he unfortunately failed to pass the trial and gain the Kukasaur's approval. In the end, he went wingless and returned dejected to the Children of Echoes. Wingless, huh? Maybe he invented the phlogiston wings to get revenge on the Kukasaurs. Perhaps. Or maybe it's simply his way of dealing with his regrets over his past flying endeavors. Either way, it doesn't excuse his abuse of the Kukasaurs. I'm going to take these guys back and expose the truth to the tribe. It's time for this conflict to end. <laughs> Easy, Chaska. Remember what I said about keeping a low profile? The ringleader still hasn't shown himself, and this man's allegation about powering the phlogiston wings with cuckoosaurs is only speculation. Bringing these men to the tribe now won't win over any current supporters of the phlogiston wings. In fact, it may even escalate the conflict further. After all, many are mistrustful of the Kukasaurs after recent events. Is that why T'Pol waited until now to try to capture my sister? I... I don't know. I mean, he did tell us to spread negative rumors about the Kukasaurs and slip some mora to anyone opposed to them, but... Nevertheless, we will be hard-pressed to change people's minds while emotions are running high. Unless we have irrefutable evidence. Bravo! My thoughts exactly. In the meantime, leave these men with me. I'll escort them back to the tribe. I'll take the other members of their crew into custody, too. They won't get another chance. Fair enough. I guess finding T'Pol is going to be the key to resolving this conflict. Let's hope the Children of Echoes have some info on them. Sorry, whatever it is, it'll have to wait till this is- Mom, sis, rest up. Children of Echoes. But how do we track him down? Just ask around until we find him? Let's start by talking to someone we know. Wakey, wakey, Shilonen. <sighs> oh, it's you. <sighs> okay, give me a second. I'll come down. Climb trees to fly further and see farther. I don't usually stop for a nap. Well, we're not all like you. Always full of energy, even after flying around all day. 
Yeah. So, uh, you've come all this way and interrupted my precious nap time. Might I inquire as to, uh, why? I'm sorry, Shilonan, but it couldn't wait. Does the name T'Pol mean anything to you? He's a craftsman, apparently. Huh. To Paul, Yeah, that rings a bell. I think that's Puma's child. Nope, I'm afraid you're a few years too late. Um, why are you looking for him? Huh, Phlogiston Wing. Pulls it off? You mean he's tried making something like this before? Yeah, he started trying to build a flying machine. Right? So right after he went... You mean your gun that's harder to tame than the proudest Kukasaur? No, but he never got very far back then, though. Blew up his... His parents traveled a lot in their youth and only returned to the tribe after he was born. But they settled in a remote... Which means most people in the tribe don't... know. Nope. I'll, uh, go get Puma. Wait for me in front of the workshop. <laughs> Allow me to introduce to Paul's mother, Puma. Hello, we're... Oh, save the pleasantries. I don't want to spend any longer talking about that boy than I have to. Uh, huh? I disowned him long ago. He is no child of mine. All he cared about was his pipe dream of... <laughs> and then when he left us, he, <laughs> he left his... He's no son of mine. He never called me mom. Hmm. Wow, they- Her husband, if you are- I'll go keep her cup. Thank you. Okay, so this notebook is the only lead we've got now, right? What's in the- Hmm. Some early designs for the phlogiston wings. And Ochkanatlan, the Cinder City. So, was he serious about the workshop in the sky? But, oh yes, the one from the trial arena that was super high up! That balloon has been there for a while, and everyone's been wondering how it got up there, but what if it started off even higher up? Part of T'Pol's... Seems likely. <laughs> By myself, I doubt even Phlogiston Wing. Yeah, and he's probably holding on to it. Nope. That's way beyond, huh? Let's not worry. Just because we can't think of a solution. Oh, good point. And Mutoda. He... Yeah. <laughs> 
No more Kukasaurus. You got We want Logistin Wing. Chaska, you're finally back. Things are getting really tense in the tribe. Have you made any- Some people even think we arrested the merchants just to support the Flying Squad and crack down on the Phlogiston Wings. We found some promising leads, but there's a major obstacle standing between us and the irrefutable evidence we need. A relic from the Cinder City? An airborne workshop and a hot air balloon above the trial arena. Neither phlogiston wings nor a kukasaur can take you that high up. Do you really think that's where Tapal is hiding? Hmm. You know what? There might just be a way. Really? Do you still remember those spouts in the arena? When they were all blocked, but now it's flowing freely. You mean all of them except the one at the very top of the arena? to build up the pressure there. Precisely. With all the gaseous flow just and flowing through one spout, it would create a high pressure wind current. And then we just ride it up into the sky. Yes, it has its risks, but with Chaska's abilities, I think she could manage it. It's an extremely risky approach, but I agree that it's feasible. If you want to give it a try, check with Inkanak at the trial grounds. She can explain how to block the spouts. Chaska, if anyone has a hope of seizing this evidence from the high heavens, it is... Goodness me! Uh, Maybe so, but we have to act fast. What's the quickest way for us to block off the spouts? Uh, from a technical perspective, I'd have to advise taking some measurements and carefully planning this out first. Then we'll have to take the rough and ready approach. See the solid phlogiston over there? Our prior ins- It's not without it. So, what happens if we do strike them all at once? It'll collapse. Okay. I see. Yeah, you got it. As long as you hit all the weak spots at once. You're right about rough and ready. Sounds like my...
It actually worked! But... Koya can give you a lift. Wow, Paimon didn't notice at all! Well... Whoa, you didn't... Yes, all right. Let's go have a little talk. Take me up! As I can. Sure enough, it only dis I should be able to figure it out with DePaul's notebook. Mm hmm. That should just about do it. According to the notebook, the platform beneath us runs on components from the Cinder City. Those can't be mass-produced. Also, I have some doubts about its mobility after seeing how it moved just now. For someone like T'Pol who dreams of flying freely, this definitely doesn't cut it. But if he's got that relic, he should be able to make a set of prototype wings for himself, right? Why bother making a whole flying workshop so he can make... But this doesn't add up. If he's already achieved the power of flight, then he must have bigger dreams we don't know about. But what? With any luck, we'll find the answers in his workshop. She's still breathing, but barely. By the looks of it, DePaul was using these cages to extract phlogiston from the Kukasaurs. Once a Kukasaur is drained of phlogiston, it becomes too weak to move. Let me see. Looks like a record of his phlogiston, log number 330. With the support of... I was finally... At, even though it relied... Log number 340 has proposed log number 377. Thinks we should proceed at a more cautious pace with the refinement experiments. <sighs> log number 114, log number 117, log number 121. Major breakthrough in the efficiency of phlogiston yield. Huh? So many parts have been crossed out! Yeah, probably the contact he alluded to in his other notebook. Guess he has a benefactor. The numbering system. We haven't got time for textual analysis, I'm afraid. Grab the notebook and let's press on. <gasps> huh. Never seen one of these before. Looks like this was built with the Cinder City components, too. Uh, you're not thinking of giving it a nice hard kick, are you? Take me up! It's asking for a nice hard kick where it hurts. Aim for the weak spot. What 
are they doing here? It's T'Pol's henchmen. He must have brought them here using the relic and his prototype wings. Watch out! I told them, but I also told them that progress can erase individual differences. Think of the tools humanity has made to fight back against... I promised them that our research will be the new front... I only hope. Imagine a world with... If only it were possible. But to Paul, what about... You're not sharing the sky. You're... Bad move. I won't let you get away with it. I'm fine. Let's keep moving. I believe he captured so many Kukasaurs. But right now, we have to focus on solving this problem at the source. Looks like we've reached the center of the workshop. And still no sign of Koya's baby! <coughs> Let's search this area for now. If we still can't find Chime, we'll double back. Did you find Chime? Not yet, but look! It's another one of T'Pol's notebooks! Hmm. All right. Log number 428. We decided to restart the experiments on phlogiston refinement, but without telling. This is the final obstacle. Log number 436 earlier today, suggested using kookasaurs as an intermediary to extract refined phlogiston. It's certainly feasible, but... Anyway, as long as our secret experiment succeeds, I'm sure won't bring it up again. Log number 443. We will conduct the experiment. Log number 444. Why is this? 
I guess whoever wrote down the log number was prevented from recording the result. Log number zero. We lost many comrades in the accident, but we cannot. As of today, we, they are arrogant to facilitate our operations. We will, all this we do to, all this we do to make T'Pol's dream a reality. Given the way this is written, not to mention the fact that the numbering had- There's also a letter tucked in the end of the notebook. It's from Puma. To Paul, I don't know where you- Your father is- I know you never liked, but we'll still be waiting. Well, Puma's not to Paul's- We know that to Paul's father passed away. It looks like the real reason to Paul didn't attend his father's funeral is because if we ask ourselves why this letter would- It all points to one answer. That's right. T'Pol was my child. He was born during my days as a wingless wanderer. His birth gave me new hope. I wanted to become the kind of mother who spent her days as a valiant rider, soaring the skies. Not an aimless wingless nobody. But his father wanted to settle down, to give his child a safe, sheltered life in his tribe. We fought about it constantly until the love we once had for each other was gone. He started a new family with another traveler who was also looking to return home. And I went back to the Flower Feather Clan, alone. Opa? I had no idea that despite being raped, can you imagine Ch or how proud I was when he said, and then the ang- You've got a lot of nerve showing your face here. <laughs> Don't I trust you've learned of Tapal's wish on your way here. A world where the sky if only his dream war will never again come So tell me, Chask. Nothing you've said, excuse You mean the argument back at the tribe? <laughs> Is a mother harming her children when she cooked the phlogiston wings are that bitter? Once the people have him they will convince themselves that the sack but this Your plan was hard. <laughs> I'm sure you- You know me, Chest, as fellow humans. Alpa, Natland doesn't belong- <sighs> Peace imposed by force, and yet you would break the bond. They are wild- Ugh, how did someone like her ever become a- <laughs> You- It's all about survival- You're wrong, Alpa. Hmm. Jaska. I- <laughs> Well, that's too bad. And the others? To us, they're friends. Is that right? any rash decisions unless you want to see her suffer <laughs> oh no that's one of the extraction cages i told my subordinates to take control of the tribe while i was away luckily for them our strongest warrior and our most powerful ally aren't there take control merely ex and since you insist on imposing me to no, Chaska, you are the strongest warriors we have. Put down your weapons, and I promise you that no harm will come to this young Sarian. I just need you to stay here for the next couple of weeks or so, while my people consolidate their power. Then, I will give her back to you, and you'll be free to leave. As long as your vision is direct. You sure about- What do we do? Even if the whole tribe- Stop delaying the inevitable! Drop your weapons and get into the cages! Uh, she's still holding- <sighs> Koya? 
Huh? What are you yapping about? Stand down. Drop your weapons now! This instant! No! in the fight. If we don't think of something fast, this whole workshop is gonna fall apart. No. They're directly beneath us. My beloved tribe! Okay. It's too powerful. But... Koya, remember... Don't worry. All I need is for you to catch me at the end. I can't hold... Don't be insane! Uh, Alpa! What are you... You're a fool, Jaska! Why would you choose such a risky solution? We cannot entrust the safety of our tribe to this wild Saurian! <laughs> I'm the fool! You really think you can stand... <laughs> Sure, it may be, but I can fly it as... <sighs> Here, this should be high enough to save the clan. <sighs> what? You don't get to die a hero today. <sighs> Are you hurt? Let me... What do you mean, I'm fine? Accident? Chaska, Koya! <laughs> How are things looking here? I think that's putting it my... I owe you one. I'll but be honest. Mom! I'll figure out the refinement. You don't need to. I just need some more time. That's all I ask. Please just trust me. Just this once. <sighs> the Flower Feather Clan. So it looks like. It's my... Koya! Koya!
So, you're absolutely sure it's not because of the explosion? Yes. For the 10,000th time, I'm sure. The moment she finally re- Anyway, if she wasn't so- I'll find an opportunity- You'd better. Got it. You're awake! I'll- I'll go let everyone know. Hey! But we're not done talking! Ah... She keeps saying. For all her confidence, she must have been a- And of course- Koya! Uncle Kuzco, we're here! Ha! I was just telling her that she's not to go chasing danger with Chaska ever again. Kuzco, I understand how you must feel. But it's all thanks to Koya and Chaska's efforts that the Airborne Workshop didn't come crashing down on our heads. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask. They didn't hurt you while we were gone, did they? Thankfully, when her co-conspirators tried to arrest me, I was out coaching Koya and Junan. The two of them were a huge help. They took care of things while I went around rallying the resistance. So, in the end, Alpa's would-be revolt didn't really get off the ground. And as it turns out, not all of the wingless want to see our dear Saurian friends replaced with phlogist and power gizmos. I'm so sorry you got mixed up in this, by the way. We should have caught on to Alpa's scheme sooner. We could have saved so many Kukasaurs from getting hurt. Most of the Airborne Workshop has now been dismantled. We've just left one small, harmless part intact, and repurposed it as a jail for Alpa and her cronies. Let's see how they like being locked up in a sky prison! So, it looks like there's just one last conflict left to resolve. Peacemaker, you're up. <sighs> I said I had to wait until things had blown over, didn't I? And now they have. But I still have no idea what to say. Koya, I just want to say... I'm sorry for how things went down back then. Does this mean you're... you're not mad at me anymore? There's that family likeness coming through again. finally make your peace with it. Yeah. 